Today we are finally at the multimodal model with GPT for Vision and I can't tell you how excited I am to show you what this can do. We are going to take a look at if GPT for Vision can guess how many beads are in this jar you can see here. Can it create an app from something I just drew in my notebook? Uh, can it create a meme from my front door porch? And can it uh, explain uh, concepts from like a YouTube video I'm just watching? So I just take an image from it. Can you explain this in more detail and more? So let's just dive in. Let's start by looking at if it can actually create this app I drew here in my notebook. So you can see I kind of wrote app flowchart, front end user input textbooks UI, and I just draw, draw this box here. I put an arrow to like this back end part. Here we have OpenAI API GPT-4. I put an arrow back to another te text box that I just called GPT-4 response box. And under here I have some style, some Java CSS style. And that's all I gave it. And I just went with uh, prompt, you are a full stack uh, software dev. You are an expert in Python, Flask and JavaScript. The user has uploaded a flowchart of a simple app he needs. Can you create it? And yeah, look at it. Just go ahead. Uh, reads all from the image, like we have a front end, back end, and some styling. It goes straight ahead and creates some type of code. So this is the back end part. This is the front end using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And yeah, that's about it. And I just ask how I use this. So basically all you had to do was copy this into like a notepad. So I copied the back end, I copied the front end. So I just went ahead over to my notepad. I pasted in the app.py here. So this is like the Flask app, right? Uh, I had to put in my OpenAI key here. And we are using the text DaVinci 003 model. We have an index here that is basically an HTML file with the UI. And that's about it. So short and simple. Uh, so let's run it and see if this works. Okay, so I just go python app.py, right? Okay, so we get the IP address here. Just click on that. Put it up here. Yeah, and there we have it. Ask GPT-4. I don't think it's GPT-4, but let's try it. So let's go. Can you give me three steps to learn Python? Let's click on ask. Should we get something back here, hopefully? All right, here we got it. Set up a programming environment. Learn the basics. Practice what you learned. Okay. So that was a very simple app to create just from the image I drew in my notebook, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to try to make a more advanced version of this going forward, maybe later this weekend. We will see. But anyway, that was cool. Let's move on to the next part. So I found this very interesting study that people try to guess how many beads were in this big jar here. So I kind of used the, this image we can see here. Uh, the answer is 27,800. So I just copied the image here and I went over to GPT-4 Vision. I put the image up. I went with the prompt. You're a logical puzzle math expert. Your task is to look at the image the user has uploaded. Find out how many beads are in the jar. Take a deep breath. Solve this problem in a step-by-step -step way. Okay, so you can see it kind of broke down. It needs to estimate the jar's volume. It needs to estimate the volume of a single bead. Calculate the total number of beads. Uh, okay, so it didn't have any exact measurements, so I just went try your best with information you have access to from the image. So it's gonna try to use the man's hand and head as a reference. Let's estimate, right? And for a bead, it's gonna use details on the man's shirt as a reference. So I thought that was pretty smart, so it's gonna try to look at this part to try to understand how big these beads are, right? That was pretty cool. And it's going to calculate the number of beads. So here you can see it kind of goes ahead, does all the calculations on the formulas it had picked. And it ended up with 27,000. I like, I almost passed out. Because you can see the answer is 27,800. And I thought, no way, that can't be true. So I just, what the hell? What is going on here? And I thought, I had to do more of this. So I went ahead, I did it again. And then it ended up with 206,000 beads. So I was kind of, oh, thank God. That, that was pretty scary, right? Uh, uh, and I tried again. And then 15,000 beads. I tried again. 60,000 beads. So it's all over the place. Uh, but for just for fun, I tried to look at the first prompt we had. And I gave it some more information. So I, I kind of forced it to estimate the volume from the man's shirt as a reference. 
of the bead and using the man's hand and head as the reference. So this is more kind of like a, a few shot prompt, right? But then it got better. Now it gets 24,000 beads. So it seems like we can use a few shot prompting here to improve the results. So we're going to be exploring that more uh, during our next videos, of course. Uh, but I, I thought it was very interesting because I thought, what the hell, was that the correct beads the first time? No way. Uh, but as you saw, that was probably just random luck. Uh, but very cool. Uh, I like it. I like the the way it broke this down, like in a step-by-step -step way. So that was cool. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. So, I was watching this video on YouTube here from Yannick Kilsher. You can see he's talking about the prompt breather paper. Uh, and he's talking about this. So, I thought I'd just, why don't I pick up my phone, take an image of this screen here, right? And try to ask GPT um, Vision if it, it can explain this to me. Uh, so, I just went ahead. I took this screenshot here, right? And I prompted, can you explain what I'm looking at on this YouTube video? Take a deep breath and explain it in a step-by-step -step way. So here it goes through every single thing we can see in the in the image here. The main heading, initializing population of task prompts and mutation prompts, thinking styles and mutation prompts, sample instructions, LLM, mutation operations. So it went ve very deep into this, right? Persons, person in the video is clearly the host or educator. He's holding a pink object. That was cool. Uh, and then I go ahead, just based on this, can you give me an example of a prompt or a muted version of this prompt? And I thought this was very clever because I didn't have any like good examples. You can see we have some examples here. And it just went ahead, created like this original prompt, solve the following algebraic equation x plus 5 equals 10, using thinking styles and mutation prompts. So, uh, thinking style, let's think step by step. So break this process down step by step. Make it more fun. Imagine you are a detective trying to find the value of x. Solve the mystery with equation x. Uh, Hypermutation. In a world where numbers are mischievous, x is hiding. Go on an adventure and find the value. So start isolating x on one side once you've done that. Uh, so I thought this was very helpful because looking at just this image, it's kind of hard to get what's going on, right? But when I asked this uh, like this, I kind of understood it right away. So I'm definitely going to be using this when I'm watching more of a complex videos uh, online. So just on my phone, just take an image of the screen, ask about it while the host talk, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. Next, I wanted to find out if GPT Vision can be funny. So, I have this kind of funny number on my house, so it's, um, the address is 69. And we got this old stool was just standing there, so I thought, why don't I take an image of my front porch? And I went with the prompt, you are an on-the-edge comedian, similar to Ricky Gervais. Create a funny meme from the image the user uploaded. So, if you see the image, it's basically nothing. It's just a door, 69, and this stool and this lamp, right? Uh, <laughs> and I thought, I thought this was quite funny, actually. So, uh, the first one was, when you try to be edgy with your house number, but the only thing getting attention is the your $3 garage sales stool. So, I think that was not good. So, when you decorate your porch in a min minimalistic cheek, but all anyone notices is the stool from the kindergarten. Uh, okay, but I thought these two ones here was very good. So, house number 69, decor budget 69 pence, stool self-esteem priceless. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, but this one I really liked. So house number says adventurous, stool says I've seen things. <laughs> I thought that was quite good. Uh, so I even put this up on my YouTube and other people found this funny too. So yeah, I guess you can use GPT-4 Vision to create memes. So this is an area I'm definitely gonna explore more, right? Okay, so I actually drew something more in my notebook. So here you can see, I tried to replicate the original GPT-4 GPT video, right? Where he drew that website on that napkin. So I just put my website, I put a header, image, floating text, image. And we have body, footer, and yeah, header, right? And that's about all I gave it. So you're an expert website creator, expertise in Java and HTML. Can you get a website from the image the user has uploaded? It should have a 90s hacker theme. Okay, right? Uh, I just went straight to the job, created a full HTML, right? 
Uh, and would you mind adding some cool JavaScripts to the site? I just put that in. All right, just went ahead, created this thing here. Uh, can you also make a pop pop up countdown Java function that alerts the visitor that they will be hacked in 10 seconds? So we created that. Uh, okay, so I integrate the hacker's team on the countdown. I don't know why I did that, but that was a bit strange. And from the conversation above, can I create the full code I need from my website? And here we have it. So that was the full code, right? So what I did, I just copied that, went over to my notepad, and I just saved it as an HTML file here. Uh, I replaced it so we have some images, and let's take a look. Okay, here you have it, right? Not bad. I wouldn't say it's great, but it does work. And I really think this uh, matrix rain effect is cool. And here you can see the website stop, you've been hacked, okay? So then I can just continue, uh, but yeah. Pretty much a very simple HTML JavaScript website. And I gotta say, this uh, this matrix rain look really cool, right? You can see we have these three menu items here. You don't see them very good, but it's home, blog, and me. And we have these couple images and some text here and stuff. So yeah, impressive, right? As I was out on my morning walk, I thought I'd just test it out, like, outside. So I went ahead and took these two images here. So this is like from the riverbank, and this is just like straight into the forest, almost. And I asked, you're a survival expert, your task is to help the user find a camping spot for the night. The user has uploaded two images, explain in detail your reasoning for choosing this spot in a step-by-step -step way. So here you can it's see it goes ahead, right? So image one, forested area, so I guess that's this one, right? Uh, pros, offers a natural shelter from elements, yeah, that's good. Trees can be used for hanging hammocks or traps, or tarps, sorry, if needed. Wood availability for fire. The cons is potential dampness from lack of sunlight penetration. Okay. Risk of falling branches. Might have uneven ground or hidden roots. Yeah, that's good. And so the image to the riverside area, this one, has the pros. Open view for enjoying scenery. Proximity to water, for cooking and drinking. Flatter ground. I thought that, that was good. So it kind of recognizes that the ground is flat here for maybe like a tent or something. The cons are exposed to the elements without natural windbreaks. Being close to water can lead to condensation in tents. Hmm. Potential for wildlife mosquitoes to be more prevalent. So recommendations. And here it kind of tries to do like a hybrid. So choose a spot near the edge of the forest, distance from river, check the ground, fire, leave no trace. So I just went ahead, so what spot should I pick? Image one or two? I recommend setting up camp near the edge of, of the forest from image one, but close enough to have access to the river from image two. So that was a bit strange. This way you can enjoy benefits of both locations. So that was edge of the forest from image one, but close to have access. Okay, so it kind of means down here then, I guess. Or is it up here? I don't understand. Uh, but I thought it was cool anyway, right? I really like this break down here and all the pros and cons. So yeah, impressive. I also saw this, so I just asked, can I eat this? The fruit appears to be a rose hip. Which is the fruit of the rose plant? Rose hips are generally safe to eat and are rich in vitamin C. They can be used in jams, jellies, syrups and teas. However, it's essential to be cautious foraging for wild plants. Many lookalikes can be toxic. Before consuming any wild plant, check check, you should remove the inner seeds and hair from the rose hips as that they can irritate it if ingested. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was cool. So I checked this up. Uh, yeah, it is of course a rose hip. Because I knew that when I took the picture. I also asked, so what kind of flower is this? I just saw that. Uh, this is a species of geranium con con referred to as crane's bill. So I checked that up. And yeah, that was the crane's bill flowers. Uh, I wouldn't know that. So again, very cool. I also had this picture of a trip I took last week. So this is like a mountain top in Norway. And I just ask, you're a geo-guesser expert. Take your best guess on where I am in this image. Take a deep breath. Think about it step by step. Sure, I'll give it a try. So I look at topography. 
so shows combinations of fjords, steep mountains, valleys. Such fjord landscape is typical of Scandinavia, particularly Norway. So that's spot on. A look at the vegetation, settlements. So there's a small village down the valley, that's right. Water bodies, that's the fjord right inside here. Mountainous terrain, perfect. And taking all clues into account, my guess, uh, best guess would be location somewhere in Norway. Possibly along the western fjord region. And that is also correct. So, well done, GPT Vision. I play a fantasy game for Premier League, so I just uploaded some stats here. So we have the league table or the team's statistics. We have the upcoming fixtures. We have some statistics for players. And I just ask, uh, I've uploaded some images about FPL. Can you help me find the best defenders for the next three game weeks? And he goes straight ahead, analyzes the image. So he looks at the team defensive performance. And he looks at upcoming fixtures. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, so as you can see, it even gives like a small description of each, each fixture. Looks at individual player stats. Yeah, perfect. And it recommends some players. And I know a lot about FPL. And I gotta say, very good. It only spelled this name wrong. It's supposed to be Trippier. Uh, but other than that, well done. I'm definitely gonna be incorporating this into my fantasy strategy. Finally, uh, I was just watching some episode of Office, so I just said, I really like this TV show, can you recommend similar show? So I took this image here, right? Just a screenshot. Of course, based on the image you provided, which appears to be from the Office, US version, here are some TV shows you might enjoy. Parks and Recreation, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, 30 Rock, Arrested Development, Community, The Office, UK version, Weep, Modern Family. Alright, now I got something I should check out. I haven't seen Weep, I haven't seen Brooklyn. I really like Parks and Recreation, so another use case. That works well, right? I guess you could just write The Office, but I thought it was cool to incorporate this. Uh, but yeah, that's my first impression of GPT Vision, and I gotta say, I'm really impressed so far, and I'm really excited to explore more, so I'm probably gonna be making a few more videos this weekend about uh, GPT Vision because I got a lot of other ideas. We're gonna go deeper into more complex stuff. So watch out for that. Other than that, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.